High Outdoors is. It's Pete, Mindwise Man's channel, aka Maverick Outdoors, and today is Saturday the 28th of June 2014, and it's coming up to about 7 o'clock at night, and I've come into some woods to stay here overnight for um, this weekend, with three other oppos, which I'll introduce you to in a little while. You must really know some of these guys anyway. But I'm actually located somewhere near the middle of over 3,000 acres of woodland with uh, wildlife and it was quite a trek to actually get in it was pouring down with rain when I set up the basher so here's my basher and as I was saying I uh, I didn't really mind getting wet from the rain because um, it was quite a perspiring trek to get up here, sort of 45 degree inclines, climbing over exposed tree roots and what have you. So uh, it was quite a nice to fresh, freshen up under the rain and then dry myself off with uh, a microfiber towel. But anyway, here's the back of the tarp. As you can see, you've got the three connections along the back edge. And I've got quite a high ridge line and upper front line as well. So you can see the fixing just there and also that end. Well, I'll bring you back to the front side. And that's my home for tonight. So what I've got here in this flameless ration heater, which actually I use two elements with a chemical reaction. You can see it's just there, a slightly lighter color, one either side, and then I inserted the sachet of vegetarian tomato noodles down there, and that heated it up, poured some water in. That went much lower. So that heated up the meal after about 10 minutes. And I use this box to keep that sort of thermally insulated by putting the MRE in there and what actually came in that box was these potatoes so what I'm going to use is half of these are pre-cooked potatoes I'm going to use half of those to go with this frozen beef curry dish which I'll then heat on here and then the other half of these potatoes I'll use with my cooked breakfast in the morning, so I'm going to separate these in half for use for two meals. Got some bread chipattes to dunk in the old curry. I'm just actually looking out from under my tarp. We're considering maybe having a fire space just there, so it's central-ish to Darren, funky prepper. This is going to be my head end, and as I look out from my head end over there, 90 degree box shape tarp, is Mike Armoured Cockroach. And there's Russ now. Contact right. All right, mate. Hi, pickle. Spot it's on, really buddy. And there's Roach with his back to us, talking to uh, Daz Funky Prepper. All right, mate. My Batman's just made me tea. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting him to cook me dinner and polish me boots later. <laughs> I've, heard it, I've heard it called some things in my time. <laughs> we all know what happens when the sun comes out. Everything goes wrong. <laughs> Everything goes tits up. Here's Dazzy's set up. He's got his basher tarp set up on top of his midge tent. Military issue, you can see Arch is over. So and it's pretty midgy round here, which is a bit of an understatement. Just a little while ago we just had a, a large deer gallop past us. So we're getting a bit of wildlife in here, so it makes it all worthwhile as well. Walking sausages. <laughs> <laughs> Venison burger like I had the other weekend. Mm, nice and fresh. Daz is just chilling, having a coffee. And as I look just over the top of the basher, 
You can see Roach is just over there, just finishing prepping some of his bits and pieces. He arrived a little bit later than us. Okay, what I've got here to actually cook on, I've not used this before, but this was a gift, Christmas gift from a family member. This disconnects just there, pushes on, and then you have to just do this screw device, which actually breaks into the seal of the gas and then makes it able to penetrate. So of course when you turn, when you turn the switch on, it uh, allows the gas to come through. So I thought I'd use this as it was actually a full container of gas, whereas my pocket rocket that I've um, used quite a lot when I've used a butane gas device to cook and heat up food and boil kettle for a brew and etc. You take a full tin with you, sort of similar to this, and you sort of it goes down its level and you've got a little bit left and I thought well I'll bring this, Chris and that, on this outing and know that I don't have to bring about sort of three or four tins that are partially full um, to use them all up so that'll do me for this weekend. Baby. Hmm. That's good. That was a convenience of all pre-cooked food. Admittedly, the curry was um, was a frozen uh, portion of food, and of course the long-life potatoes, which I took out of the sealed silver bag. Silver bag. So, um, what my priority was for this weekend or this sort of 24 odd hours out this Saturday night and then tomorrow. The only raw food I've got actually is for tomorrow, which is um, sausages, bacon and a couple of eggs. So I'm going to scramble the eggs, do the sausages and the bacon and uh, the rest of the potatoes, the other half of that portion. There's Roach under his basher. Just overheard him say he's got, I think, a chicken ticker and um, a packet of rice pre-cooked. So he's got his little fire, fire going over there, having a sip of a brew. There's nothing better than just chilling out. Outdoors, making something to eat, you know. I mean, it's not just about, I've said it before, being on a mission, you know, you've got to practice your skills. Yeah, we practiced our skills, and one of them was getting soaking wet in the rain, putting up the basher. Um, you know, you can get demoralised and think, oh, no, I'm going to pack up and go home, or, you know, you don't want to do it, but that's part of it. But now the weather has totally cleared. Um, tiny bit of cloud dotted about, but it's really mild now. I must admit I did quite like the downpour of rain freshening me up. I actually said to the lads when the three of us were coming up here before Roach arrived on his own a little bit later was that um, once I'd set up the shelter, which actually didn't happen first of all, but once I'd sh set up the basher um, I was quite prepared to sort of strip down to my underwear and just let the rain calm down, rinse myself off under it and use my um, lightweight towel to just dry myself off and feel refreshed as I say it was quite um, an aspiring little journey coming up here, especially on the gradient. As I was saying, you know, the weather, it's just um, totally still. And if it's going to be like this for the rest of the evening, um, then, uh, you know, we're really blessed with it. Spot on. And again, you know, it's just experience being outdoors. Literally, Maverick outdoors. <laughs> okay, as you can see, I've nearly finished the curry themed meal. 
but I can't get over how these chapatis just briefly placed on there as you just saw me doing just now really give that freshly cooked restaurant style flavour I kid you not really changes the flavour because they taste so good this is my third chipati don't call me calorie kid for nothing <laughs> just time it just right just a little bit of flame at the right level just sort of cooking it through a bit just tarnishing it a little bit that's a good word tarnishing not quite burning in other words <laughs> really does change the flavour, hence that's why I'm having to have a third one. So yeah, it really does um, make all the difference. Obviously these are pre-cooked, but just um, tarnishing them over the old butane gas. You could maybe put it over light flames or something, or near the coals of a fire. But then of course if you've got a direct heat that just scorches it then it will taste sort of sooty and burnt but, but I'm that impressed as I say I've got a third one. Quality. Oh baby. Yummy. Okay, so it's about 20 past one in the morning and um, as you can see the remnants of a fire that we had sort of through the evening we made something to eat and about 10 o'clock in the evening just as it started to get dark we struck up a fire so it was really nice just to four of us sit around and just putting the worlds to right having a chat and uh, it wasn't really appropriate to video really because it was sort of personal talking and a few sort of personal stories and you just sort of sitting around the fire chatting really. So we kept the fire going until sort of half past twelve. Roach settled about sort of just about twelve thirty, so did Russ. And then me and the Funkster we just chatted for about another half hour or so. I made a brew, dunked some biscuits and uh, we're now just settling for the night. So um the rain sort of held off luckily enough. We did um, get a little bit started to kick in. It's just a very, very light brief shower. About 12.30, quarter to one, about sort of half an hour ago, really. And uh, it sort of held off and now it's um, clear. So although there's a little bit of cloud cover, we can't see any stars in the sky. So it's not a clear starry night. But the um, atmosphere is really nice and still and calm. There's no breeze. It's not cold, it's just a little bit fresh is what you'd expect really. So I'm going to settle now. I've got a vest, a small t-shirt on underneath this shirt. And then I'm just going to get in the two season tropical army sleeping bag. So I'll zip myself in, I've got my um, camo fleece if I need to put that on, but I think I'll be comfortable enough once I actually get in the bag, so I'm going to settle for the night now. So uh, bring this little event from Saturday night into the early hours of Sunday morning to a close.
Good morning, it's now Sunday at about 20 past 8 a.m. And uh, it's a reasonably mild morning. During the middle of the night I felt felt the chill factor, temperature lower a little bit, so I felt it in the sleeping bag. So I put this fleece over the top um, and that did me okay. But um, last night um, there wasn't any rain. But the funny thing was, was that just as daylight started to break about four in the morning, because I woke up a few times just sort of moving around, but uh, what sounded like as if it could have been the rain, what it was, was the actual droplets falling from the canopy of the trees above. And what was happening, you could sort of hear a very, very slow flow of sort of breeze build up. And as it got just a little bit louder, it obviously hit the canopy of the trees sort of where we are here. And the droplets of water then fell down on the tarp and then when the little bit of breeze died down a bit, but it didn't happen straight away. And what it reminded me of was a really mild version of when I was up Brecon Beacons last October, 28th of October, 29th of October 2013. And myself and my mate Mountain Goat Dave, we uh, trekked up to Penai Fan and then went down in the vale between Penai Fan and Cribbin. And I'd set up my mountain tent the first time I'd actually used it. I'd given it a test run where I go trekking and sort of get my fitness up for doing sort of long distance walking and trekking and that. And um, Dave was under his tarp, really low profile, virtually from the ground level to the ridge was about, about head width because the wind kicked up. And um, as we heard the wind start to build up, you could time it when it then hit our bashers. So every time we could time when the wind was going to hit us and shake my tent about via um, how the wind was sort of go and then bang hit um, Dave's basher, his tarp of my tent. And it was last um, last night and then during the daybreak today. As it happens, the camera's not going to pick it up, but ironically, I can hear it now. Just very, very mild, but it's actually gone off northbound. But it was sort of coming westbound and you could sort of hear it. So imagine my hands, the wind, it was sort of building up and then hitting the canopies of the trees. And of course, all the droplets of the water are coming down on top of the tarp. And the remnants of any dampness up there on obviously the outer side is from the droplets coming from the canopy of the trees so there's no rain as such really once we'd sort of settled for the night so and we'd all crashed out in our um, sleeping bags but i need to get some calories down my throat now so i'm gonna knock up some cooked breakfast and uh, get me new christened camping gas unit on the go Okay, so I've got my eggs in my trusty little plastic box. I've got the half portion of fried potatoes left over that I had half with with a curry last night. Three rashers of bacon, which I put in my pack when I left in the morning, frozen. And also sausages, but I had some beans left over from a tin that I'd actually consumed at home. And I thought what I'd do is I'd bring these rather than bring in a tin and just sellotaped it over so the lid doesn't come off. So there we go, scoff time. Oh baby. When you're um, cooking up the food, so you don't get it sticking to the pan, it's getting just a sort of a low heat that's going to be warm enough and hot enough to actually cook, as you saw the sausages cooking. 
but it's just sort of keeping the meat on the move or anything that you're cooking in your mess tin. Because this is this one's stainless steel, it tends to be sort of less porous on the surface for the whatever you're cooking, the substances to actually stick. So um, as you see, there's only just a little bit of mark there where the fork is, but just keeping it on the move and there's less chance of your food sticking and just being awkward cooking. On the move, in the groove. <laughs> oh baby! Okay, uh, that's where I was, I mean, basher, tarp was there. So we're ready to go now, it's uh, coming up to about 11.30 in the morning. And uh, Russ had to leave a little bit earlier, he left about an hour ago, so we said our farewells and there's three of us left. Roach, he's packed up, and uh, Daz. Roach douched over the fire pit and LNT'd on it. That's where Daz was, and there he is with his rucksack. And there's Roach, not quite having a chill, he's just getting his rucksack on, ready to get up. And this was our space. Rucksack's all ready to go. And we're off somewhere over there. So it's really sunny, there's about 20% clumpy cloud cover, the sun's beaming through the blue sky and we're getting hot and sweaty, there's Daz, Roach has gone in front and then we've got this near 45 degree angle, so sort of many times I've referred to in the past about you know it's not just about your kit but your biggest bit of kit is your two legs and two arms and uh, having that sort of relevant bit of <laughs> conditioning. Hello there! Filming me, filming you, filming us. And uh, you know it can sort of disorientate you if you get knackered and dehydrated because you're unfit or you're conditioning. But um, you know it's just as important. So if you're going to do things which involve some physical exertion just as much as your knife is sharp and your shelter you want to be waterproof you want to feel that your body's up to it as well. So I'm perspiring now and it's really still atmosphere, it's humid from the damp weather yesterday, now being sunny, getting all the moisture out of the ground. And I've got the old water, taking sips of it every 15-20 minutes. Main aspect is always make sure you don't allow yourself to get thirsty, because once thirst actually kicks in, it starts to change the metabolism and the blood sugar levels of your body. And it can take from 6 to 12 hours to then get the blood sugars back into the muscles, so you need that hydration all the time. But that's something I might be talking about in a future video, as I've said before. But here we go. 1 full step, one trip on those exposed roots, and you're going there first. <laughs> I'm ready to give you CPR if you need it. <laughs> Walking in the shade now, which is a little bit better. Oh, we can see the bracken blowing a little bit, so obviously it must. Oh, that was nice. A little bit of cool breeze now. Must be a wind trap along here, mate. Yeah, I'm just farting. <laughs> Okay, so we come back to uh, our uh, original RV point when we met up to then take this trek right up into those woods.
So it's just gone 12.30 in the afternoon and uh, as you can see it's a lovely blue sky. A few clumpy clouds, nothing that's going to give any detriment of weather. So as I now come to a close of yet another overnighter, but this time out in the woods on a bit more terra firma instead of the rivers or in the canoe. Uh, yeah, it was just to get out, chew the cud, have a bit of a break, just sharing the experience with um, channel followers. And as always, really appreciate your interest. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers. Take care.